We are live. live. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. We're going to step on some toes tonight, so everybody get your steel toe boots out because you're going to get them smashed. Um, Let's run through real quick a couple of uh, things to catch up on. We will be having a live event in West Virginia, July 16th and 17th, Saturday and Sunday. Lunch will be provided. Uh, we're going to have a reception at the Wingate by Wyndham Hotel in Hurricane in the Lunatic Lounge, the Blue Ribbon Bar. That'll be Friday night. We're doing a live podcast uh, from the bar that night. The event is $395. If you're bringing a spouse, family member, or teammate, their price is $245. And if you register by June 15th, you get $50 off. Use code LUNATIC at checkout. So just go to the website, blueribbonlogistics.com, click on events, and it will take you to the page. Uh, Rocky and Carl will be doing inspections. Um, Rocky's hoping to have a bunch of uh, uh, bushings. You know he's, you know how he is trying to get parts. Uh, so Rocky's planning on having some bushings and stuff to be able to do some alignments while he's in town. I believe he's coming in town Wednesday, correct? Yeah, I don't think he's going to work though until Thursday. Yeah. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Rocky will be available. Carl will be available to do inspections. Those are going to be $140. Uh, pay us, we'll pay him. Um, and uh, so we have the link to the hotel on the website event page. If you go to the event page, you can click a link there to go and get the room is 99, or I'm sorry, 109. Uh, then you just fill out that form of registration. Larry is doing a special... Uh, seminar on Saturday night, advanced pr business practices. That is $99 per person. So if you're bringing a spouse or family member, it's 99 for the each of you. And <clears throat> we are a distributor for Pittsburgh Power. So we have, uh, we can meet your needs when it comes to max mileage and OPS products. Uh, um, those are available on our website now for purchase. We'll ship them to you. And I believe that's all for the the basic stuff right get us ready to get into the topic like and subscribe oh yeah don't forget to like and subscribe that helps the uh the almighty algorithm to bless us with more placement in the algorithm so <laughs> two heroes <laughs> um <clears throat> so i put in the description of this video um that I saw a uh, William that was on here a couple of weeks ago. We have a little private uh, group in our signal thread where we just share, you know, funny stuff. And he shares this video this is Asian, my uh, mother trucker interviewing this truck driver. And, uh, and it says, uh, if you're not going to shut down, you don't deserve, you shouldn't be in the business. Uh, you need to grow a pair and shut down or you don't need to be in the business. And, um, I watched this thing and I'm, and I'm watching this guy, um, you know, with the typical kind of virtue signaling, I'm a truck driver, we're truck drivers, we're the most important thing here. If we shut down, you're all screwed. Uh, so we should show, just shut down and show everybody. And, uh, I see a lot of this now, i you know, ever since fuel started creeping up, the market started tightening up. Um, oh, well, I'm just, I'm just going home. I can't make any money like this. I'm going to go home. I'm going to park my truck. And it's lunacy. I mean, it's just stupid. Um, if, if you're, if you don't understand basic math, um, man, I meant to get somebody shared ATBS had an analysis. I meant to get it and I forgot. I'll try to dig it up here in a minute, but it basically showed the fuel cost last year, the fuel surcharge last year versus the fuel cost this year and the surcharge this year, and that the fuel surcharge was paying more of the fuel than it was then. And we, we can back this up with our own numbers, uh, but they had it in a nice little graphic. Um, the <clears throat> If you're shutting down right now because you think fuel is the problem, then you're not doing the math. You're not, you don't know your numbers. You're not tracking your fuel. You're not tracking your expenses. You're going off of a feeling and you're looking at outrageous fuel prices 
And you think that's the problem, but it's not the problem. It's a symptom of the problem. And we have, we've, tr we've, we've talked about this and we've tried to talk about this, that when you go from a company driver to an owner operator, I, I feel like there's a lot of people that think, oh, well, it's going to get easier, right? Oh, well, I, if I, if I own the truck, things are going to get better for me and easier for me because now I don't have all these people that I blame for all of my problems. I don't have them to worry about anymore. And the reality is when you go from an employee to the owner of a business, no matter what industry you're in, things get harder and harder and harder until you have developed the habits and the practices and the things that you need to do to properly run your business, to properly know your numbers. And then it can, I think, get a little easier over time. Um, but why do we, why do you think 95% of first time owner operators fail? This is why, because they don't know their numbers. They don't know how to adjust in the market. And uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of them lack the work ethic that it takes, you know, cause you have to work harder. That's, that's the part that sucks about it. But the idea that, that $5 a gallon fuel makes trucking unprofitable is lunacy. It's, it's, it's nonsense. Um, so, and, and, and right over here on the other side of the screen is the guy that can tell you that with the numbers. Um, but if you don't know your numbers, you're never going to know whether you're profitable or not. <clears throat> well, the bottom line on this deal is if you think that fuel is your problem, it just, it just illustrates your lack of knowledge of business. You know, um, it's just like a couple of years ago when the same thing was about brokers are stealing all of our money. It's no, this is just the latest uh, variant of ignorance is all it is yeah. of, of ignorance. Um, it's, it, it's what gets, it's what gets the news. It's what everybody's, you know, focusing on. But here's the, just to, I do our fuel analysis every Sunday, okay? Today, we had 10 trucks run last week. Seven of those 10 trucks either broke even or, or most of them made a profit on the fuel surcharge, okay? Yep. Seven out of 10 trucks. Um, so, you know, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You know, here, here's, what, here's what frustrates me. But, but again, there again, you remember, we're talking to a bunch of truck drivers, not really people that know anything about business, you know, um, you know, the, j just think about the shark tank. Well, you ever, you ever watch a shark tank, Chris? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I love that show. You you see how they just crucify these people okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. because people come in there thinking that they know what they're talking about. And they find out in 10 seconds that they don't have a clue what they're talking. I watched a couple of doctors. He made the first, first pitch I've ever seen on that show. Mark Cuban gets up and goes over and shakes the hands of him and says, I just got to come over and tell you because y'all doctors, this is the shittiest presentation I've ever seen. You know, <laughs> he didn't use shitty. I did. That's right. my part. But, but, um, but he, you know, we talk about this all the time. You know, you, you drive a truck for somebody else. Your dream is to drive your own truck with your name on it so that you can make the decisions. So you can be the boss. So you can, you know, you can make the money, you know. And then when it comes down to it, all right, you don't realize how to make the money. You know, you didn't run the truck as a business when you could make anything. Okay, two years ago, you could have made and at, at Landstar, if you did, you could have made 300 grand hauling general freight. Okay. The way we run 100%. You, 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 you couldn't help but do it. Okay. Now it's going to get a little tighter because the, the market's going to adjust back to what's normal. You know, I love these guys that talk about what's wrong with this rate. Well, you, you didn't ask what was wrong with it when it was double, you know, you right. pulled back. And worked less. Okay. You didn't ask what was wrong with it then. Now it's adjusting and now you can't do what you did and run one load a week and still make, you know, uh, a little bit of money. And so you freak out. It, it all, the, 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 
the root cause, and I'm a root cause kind of guy. When I look at a problem, I don't look at the tip of the iceberg. I want to look down under the water and see that big block that you don't see. And the big problem here is a lack of general business knowledge. Okay. You know, people in business have no business being in business, you know, and, but, but, and, and because I decide to go in business, okay, then I'm, I'm, I have this entitlement that all of a sudden is, is, uh, is knighted on me by the DOT. Here's your, here's your MC number. Here's your DOT number. And here's your entitlement because you made the decision to do this foolish thing. Now the government, your customers, everybody's going to cut you slack because you made a decision to do this, you know? And, and, and now it's like, well, if I can't get what I want, I'm just going to go home. I, I saw some, was it the same guy you, does your guy say if you can't go home for six weeks or six months, you shouldn't be a driver? Is that, was that the same video? I'm not sure. I don't, well, I, I, saw a video, I saw a video the other day uh, and, and the guy was sitting there talking about we should, everybody should go home, not for three days, but for either, it was either six weeks or six months. I can't remember which one it was. He said, and if you can't do that, you ought not be driving a truck. That was his, that was his, um, his, um, you know, his, th his, um, thesis. <clears throat> you know, the problem, the, the reason that, <laughs> the reason that owner operators have so much trouble is because in, that all the things that they're running to be in business for themselves to, they're running from companies that know how to do it. Okay. Yep. They're leaving the fold of, of profitable companies. You know, they, they look at Landstar and they go, Landstar made $640 billion last year. They should cut our percentage down because they made so much money. Dude, you know, they made that much money because they know what the hell they're doing. All right. Yep. In spite of all these 14,000, you know, semi morons that, that lease their vehicles to them. And, and so, so now, the, the, they want Landstar to give up some of their profit because they couldn't share in some of it. You know, Here, here's what gets me. Here's what gets me. Everybody that comes to Landstar starts the same way as people being born in this country, upside yeah. down and naked. Okay. Yeah. That's how you show up at orientation. All right. You get a truck. All right. You show up to orientation. You get a, a fuel card. You get a little book. You get a, a, a some, some software to find your loads with. And you get a two days half ass orientation and they pat you on the back and send you out. And everybody starts the same way. Why is it? There's a bunch of people. Why is it that we do $7 million? Okay. And then a BCO can't even, can't even pay his bills. What's the difference in those two in, individuals? You know, now I'm asking a rhetorical question because I know, you know, the, the difference, but is it Landstar? You know, is it, is it, wait a minute, Landstar needs to change their system. You know, I'll tell you something else that gets me. Okay. Everybody that comes to Landstar in about two or three weeks, they want to fix it. This low board, this low board, you know, somebody to fix this low board, take these loads off here that nobody wants. You know, they've, they've been here literally three weeks and uh, now all of a sudden they want to fix Landstar. Okay. $640 billion company. All right. Mm -hmm. And some little half ass moron that just bought a truck, hadn't been in business three weeks, is going to fix Landstar. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. OK, I'm sorry. But here's the deal. You got no business buying a truck. You got no business being in business if you don't understand business. And if you think that fuel is your problem, when Landstar's giving you 77 cents a mile, I think it was this week, a yep. mile. OK, to compensate you for the fuel. All right. And, and, and the other thing is if you're, if, if fuel is, it just got your attention in the last few months, that's your other problem. Okay. Two years ago, fuel was your number one expense. Today, fuel is your number one expense. Okay. Two years ago, you could have made money falling off a log and, but you didn't, you didn't, you, you didn't care about the fuel. You said, if I have to worry about fuel, I'm not getting enough rate. Hell, I'm just going to put the floor and let it eat. OK, yep. you didn't conserve then. Now, all of a sudden, you don't know how to conserve. You don't know how to make money, even with the fuel surcharge. So I'm sorry. OK, but if you have a problem right now and you want to take your truck home and sit, I got a better idea. Why don't you sell your truck while it's worth some money 
and go get a job and work for somebody that knows how to run a business. Okay. In case you hadn't heard, there's a, there's a driver shortage. I understand, you know, yeah. Shouldn't be a big problem. Find a job and go work for somebody that knows how to run a business. Now you won't be able to act like a turd. Okay. You won't be able to turn down. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to move my truck for less than $4 a mile. You'll have to give up all that, but you're going to give that up anyway, involuntarily. When you go home and sit and that truck sits outside until the tow truck shows up to take it back to the bank. Yep. You piss me off. Now, now you, now you, you well, now in the we've got, we've got Chris Cheatham in the house and, <clears throat> and he's a land star agent. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's just <clears throat> the market self fixing the market fix. The market regulates itself. Just like the stock market. No, yeah. it, the land star is the perfect example of the free market, which yeah. the stock market is. Okay. Yes, it's going to correct. It's going to, you know, that's the cycle. We we talk about this all the time. It typically is an 18-month cycle. As long as I've been in this business, it's been an 18-month cycle, except this one. This one, it got extended out because of the ELD and because of the pandemic and, you know, all this other stuff. People were buying everything. They bought every roll of toilet paper in the United States, okay? <laughs> and it still got them in a grudge. I mean, they buying stuff they didn't need, okay? Mm -hmm. And it just, somebody had to bring that stuff. Somebody had to haul it. And it, it created this incredibly artificial market. And then everybody wanted to get it. Wait, listen, I got guys calling me still. A guy called me today that knows nothing about trucking. He wants to go buy trucks and get in truck business. I said, why? He said, because you can make a lot of money. I said, well, some people can. What do you know about trucking? Nothing. I said, well, you won't. Okay. You'll make no, you'll, you'll, it'll be a disaster. Don't do it. Yeah. Or we've had two now that have called and said, Hey man, I want to get into doing what y'all doing, but you know, I, I don't want to drive a year for a, a OTR for a company. And I'm thinking you can't skip to the head of the line. You just yeah. can't do it. Let um, me just jump up here and start out where you are. Yeah. Well, and the, the thing about having Chris here is <clears throat> what gets me is whenever this is kind of an American thing or a Western civilization thing where, uh, if there's something you don't understand, just find somebody to blame for it. Right. And so, you know, here at Landstar, they're blaming agents or they're blaming Landstar itself or the they're load blaming board, brokers. The load board. Yeah, yeah. They're blaming brokers. And, and what gets me the most about these morons, uh, and that TikTok video that you showed me before, one of the things, well, well, I mean, uh, the customer's still paying $5 a mile and the broker's taking all the money. Do you think the customers are that stupid? Put yourself in the position of the, shipping coordinator the person that's paying the bill okay their literal existence is about getting stuff moved as cheaply as possible well when the market is up here the cheapest that they can move it for is x and when things start happening and capacity and volume gets all this stuff gets out of whack and they see an opportunity to pay a thousand dollars less to move that load you don't think they're going to take that the broker is not it's just well, let me, let me, let me, let me illustrate that even better. How many times have you seen a post on the Landstar Facebook groups? Where can I get, name it, X, Y, Z, without breaking the bank? Okay. They want to get paid, you know, the big money, but yet in their own person, you know, how, where can I get this truck fixed without, you know, it, it, cheap? Or, mm -hmm. or I see it all the time. How can I find insurance cheap? You know, well, but yet you're the same one. You know, bad mouth your customer because your customer wants to get this his freight haul cheap. Mm -hmm. It's okay for you to go find something cheap. It's not okay for your customer to do the same thing you're doing. What where what where's the hypocrisy in that? Is it just me or is it just like they they think that only only they're entitled to get full price? You know, yeah. And it's it just comes it just comes down. Um, it, it just comes down to a basic fundamental ignorance of economics because it doesn't matter. It, you could be in trucking or you could be in construction. I've got a friend of mine that it builds houses, right? And big fancy houses, you know, the, the, the million dollar houses where their bathroom costs more than my house, right? Well, the last two years has been a struggle for him trying to get product and, and things are skyrocketing. And, and so he's stuck between the people that are selling <clears throat> the building materials 
and his customer, because he may have said, yeah, I can build your house for X. And then the cost of the stuff to build that house with doubles, what's he going to do? Come out of his pocket? No, he's going to have to go to the customer and say, I need more money because these, the, these prices of, of these things uh, have gone up and I don't have the opportunity to eat that cost. But the, the, the market from 1913, ever since the inception of the Federal Reserve to now, boom, bust, boom, bust. You can watch it through any graph over a long period of time. What's happening right now is not new. We're living the 1970s all over again. You would think that that human society would be smart enough not to do the same stupid stuff 50 years later, but it's, it's all the same. The government re reaction is the same. The consumer reaction is the same. The business, everybody's doing the exact same stupid stuff that they were doing 50 years ago. And guess what happened 49 years ago and 48 years ago, the market corrected and we went in to the good times and then we ran it up and it busted and we went, it's just over and over again. So, um, what I find interesting, though, is, and there was a comment, let's see, y'all are talking from a big company aspect, been doing this as a single owner op for 39 years, I don't see it your way, sir, no disrespect intended. Okay. Uh, Mike, I'm with you. Okay. While we're leased to a big company, we behave just like you do. Our, our behavior is not that much different. Because we operate like a 10 to 12 truck fleet, okay? Now, we partner with Landstar because Landstar is like our Amazon or our eBay. We get lots of support. We get discounts on fuel that are unmatched anywhere. And so I'm not knocking being a single, uh, single truck unwrap. But this here, what we're dealing with, doesn't change from market to market. Brokers are paid generally on percentage. This, if you're vilifying brokers and just saying, oh, well, they're taking, you know, the rate is still up here, but they're only paying this, that's nonsense because their customer's not going to let that happen. Would you let that happen if you were the shipping coordinator and uh, you think the customer doesn't see the contract? You, the, the customer is paying that freight bill. So sure, is there some scenario somewhere where somebody's paying five thousand dollars to move a load and the broker moves it for twenty five hundred? Maybe. But every data uh, piece of data that I can find for the last fifteen or twenty years is that a broker makes fifteen percent average on average. On average, about fifteen percent. I saw sometimes some, it's twenty. I saw some video just, I think it was today or yesterday. A guy was talking about this. He saw about when we went to Washington, D.C. last time, brokers, um, and I, I don't know where he gets, I, I, I'm, I don't know if you can back it up or not. He said brokers were making 68% before they showed up in Washington, D.C. After they did that, brokers came down to 25%. <laughs> but yet there's, I, you know, I don't know where he, where's the documentation for that. But that, I mean, that's ludicrous, too. You know, if, if truck drivers really think, first of all, if you've got a problem with a broker, you don't have to use a broker. You know, just go get, park your truck, get on the phone or go out and knock on doors and get your own freight. Take the bill of lading off all the runs, loads you've ever done in your life and go to the customer and try to try to get it away from the broker. And you'll see how it's not the easiest thing to do. But you don't you don't have to use a broker in this business, you know. Somebody said a while ago they had their own customers. Well, there you go. Yeah. Chris, Chris Sarver, thank God I have my own customer. I just sit back and laughed at all this shit. Yeah, well, me too, Chris. Welcome to the party. <clears throat> you can't run a business on feelings, okay? You can't run a load on feelings. You can't trip plan on feelings. You have to use math. Um, and I have to go over this and over this and over this with our guys on trip planning because they're not reading their map. They're not doing a proper inspection of the routes. They're just going, well, you know, I don't like running in the mountains. And I'm, of course, 25 years ago, I can never, ever imagine a truck driver going, well, I don't like running mountains, so I'm not going to. Like, where the hell did that come from? Um, and listen, let me be clearly on the record. I hate the broker model. I would love to see, and I believe the broker model is 
will at some point end and there won't be any more brokers. There will be customers contracting directly, directly with trucks on blockchain. So this, I see this as a self fixing problem. Um, and it's going to take a while to get there, but if you if you open your field of vision and you kind of look around at what's going on on other segments of the economy and globally, the broker model is not going to survive because it's wasteful and inefficient. It's not it's not the best way to do things. It's just the way we've done things. And of course, humans are kind of dumb that way. Well, this is the way we've always done it, so we need to keep doing it that way. No, no, we, the broker model is going away one hundred percent. Just don't know when. Um. But you've got to get out of this mentality of finding someone to demonize and blame. You know who you can control? You. So you fix your fuel mileage. You fix your maintenance cost. You fix the amount of loads and miles and stuff that you're running. You fix your business and, and stop worrying about it. Because any time that you, have, you find this devil, this, this supposed boogeyman, when you start focusing on the boogeyman, you take your eyes off the stuff that you could be fixing. And there's so much stuff you, uh, where'd Steve Wheeler? Steve Wheeler, know your numbers, guys. My 30 day average for fuel economy is 9.04. My fuel costs me 57 cents per mile for all miles. Fuel is just another profit center for me. And always has been. It's not, yep. that didn't start today. That always has been. Um, or, or you can say, I'm going to take my truck and go home. I'm just going to wait this out. We got Randy Metter in here causing trouble. Nice. You ain't buying no electric automated truck. You're going to keep driving that orange glider you're driving. Well, no, no, no. Money. I wish you would because I need you. I wish you'd sell me that truck. Well, yeah, yeah. That's, go yes. buy this and sell me your, your, yours. Okay? Yeah, go buy you a Tesla, Randy, and you sell us your truck. And... Uh, Okay, wait a minute. So Chris says, explain to Chris Sarver why it's no way his comment will work. Billing, credit, all the back off stuff. So what did I miss? Well, so Chris said, if you have a problem with the broker, go after the customer directly, which you have to be, obviously you have to watch out ethics there because, you know, if you, if you haul a load for somebody under a broker contract and you go try to steal the customer, you can get some trouble. I think what he means, though, is... We feel like that the 35%, or as Larry points out, it's really about 29 by the time you figure in the fuel surcharge. Um, just call it 30. The 30% 30 of the rate that we are giving to Landstar, what we get for that is worth more than 30%. The billing, the permits, the compliance, the LCAP discounts, fuel discounts, We've done the math. I mean, that's what kind of, well, why are you, why are you at Landstar? Because the math works. That's why we're at Landstar. Uh, why would we, if we could mathematically say that being leased to Landstar was too expensive, we'd go somewhere else. But the, the problem is everything we do is based in mathematics. He runs everything on QuickBooks. With a stroke of his finger across the keyboard, he could probably, in 30 seconds, tell you what any truck, any one of our trucks has made and, and any different profit center, the fuel cost, percentage of revenue, the maintenance cost, the percentage of everything is there at the tip of his finger because every Sunday he does the fuel reconciliation and every Wednesday he does the settlement and he puts the numbers in there and the numbers are irrefutable. Nothing that we do is based on feelings. It's based on experience, either lots of, well, I ain't going to do that again, or it's based in mathematics because math is irrefutable and the numbers don't lie. And if you know your numbers, that's why I would be a, I would be a, I'd be fine if somebody gave me a mathematical statistical analysis why the Landstar contract is unfair, but they don't. They give me this line of horse shit that's based on nothing because they haven't bothered to do the math. But, you they can, made, but they made $640 billion. That's too much money. I'm out here busting my ass. I can't make a nickel. I'm making Landstar rich. 
Right. Well, and, and, and Chris Sarver, please understand, I'm not against being a single truck owner operator with your own authority. I wouldn't do it because I feel like the risk is too high. Now, you've been doing this for 30 plus years. Obviously, you're doing something right, okay? And the reason that I won't recommend someone to go do that is because my experience with people over the last four years since I've been at Blue Ribbon and doing this, doing this podcast, doing this program, most people do not have the discipline to do what you do. Because obviously, again, if you're doing it for 33 years, you're doing something right. Well, you're the, in my view, you're the exception, not the rule. You're, you're, the, you're the example that someone should be looking at. But unfortunately, most people are not going to do that because they're not going to do the hard work that you've done to stay in business for 33 years. I'm just, they're just not going to do it. I see it here every day. They're not going to do the hard work. And if you're not going to do the hard work, you're not going to, to build the discipline and build the habits, you're going to fail and you're going to fail hard. And so that's why I can't personally recommend in 2022 for most people to go do what you're doing. Now, does that mean they can't do it? No, some, somebody can do it, but I just don't think your average person is going to do that and well, they're going to fail hard. Again, go back to the numbers. Five out of a hundred succeed. Okay. He's one of them. Obviously he had, you know, the, the, uh, the drive, the whatever skill sets, desire, priorities, accountability, whatever he, but again, the vast majority of people do not have that, do nope. not have the skill sets and will not develop them because their priorities are messed up. They want the benefit of what Chris has, but they don't have the discipline and the, and the, and the perseverance to get there. You know, they want to start, they want to go buy a brand new truck right up front. They want to be home three days. We got it. Well, I'm not going to get into that. We don't want to be home three or four days, you know, every week or two. Okay. And they don't, and they think that because I'm buying my own truck, I can do that. Well, Chris, you probably know better than that. Okay. You know, if you, if you've been in business that long and been successful, you know, as well as I do, I've been doing this as not trucking, but I've been in business in 1977. I know a little bit about business. Okay. I know that there's many a time when I paid my employees more than I paid myself. I know many a time when I could, I, my, my, my mother died. And I had to finish the, the, the business and, 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 and continue to run the business and, and get to the, her visitation two hours after it started. You know, now how many people, you know, the people probably aren't going, oh, he's cold hearted. No, that's just what it takes when you've got 30 people whose lives depend on your business because they're your employees. You know, there's just a responsibility there that you have to do. I was a Landstar agent. My dad, I was standing, standing by my dad's bedside when he died. I was a Landstar agent trying to get some freight out of Mexico for one of my customers. You know, so there's a price you have to pay here for this success. All right. And so when these people look at it and go, oh, he's lucky or he's, you know, they're, they're doing $7 million this year. They must, you know, no, I paid a very, very big price to be where we are. And so has Chris, I'm quite sure. Chris Sarver. OK, because yep. you don't get here without paying a price. The bot, the other side of that, though, is, you know, you're also going to pay a price if you don't do it, you know, because you're going to find out that, you know, um, running back with your tail between your legs back to some company somewhere and driving for them and bad mouthing um, owner operators. Um, and now your your whole future is dependent on somebody else that can fire you tomorrow, you know. Chris Sarver doesn't have to do that. He shaves the boss every morning. All right. So he has security because he's paid the price. And uh, I had a guy, I had a guy one time and said, that's something coming up. Later. Oh yeah. I had a, I had a friend of mine that, uh, you know, he didn't make it. Lane, so you, you can't do that. I said, so your buddy's an idiot and you're just repeating what he said. So you're probably just as dumb as he is. And he just looked at me with a blank stare, but I just couldn't help. But you know, because I failed at Landstar. Was it Landstar's fault? No. Was it the agent's fault? No, it was my fault. I had no one to blame for the demise of my trucking business, which wasn't much of a business. Um, 
but me. And, you know, uh, it wouldn't have mattered if I was least, well, I'd have never made it as an independent. I'd have been out of business first DOT audit the way I ran things. Um, but it wouldn't have mattered. You know, you can, I, I love the, I mean, we can have like a, an honest conversation about the, you know, let's look at a leased truck versus an independent truck and let's compare the numbers and let's see who made more money. As long as you properly adjust for how much did you work and where did you go and how much did, you know, there's so many variables in it, but, um, I would got, I would have to believe that the, the, a properly run truck leased to Landstar and a properly run, run truck uh, like Chris Sarver, the profit margin going to be pretty close. You know, the, if, if, if you could, if you could measure it apples and apples um, because we're all here doing the same thing. And what are we trying to do at the end of the day? Make a profit and survive. If you, so let me let me try this. I had this idea in the head. Let me see if I can make it make sense. Let's say that you wanted to be an owner operator so that you have that freedom that everybody talks about and you don't have the you know you don't have the company dispatcher and all that stuff. And you said, okay, I want to make sixty thousand dollars. Well, the way we do things, you can make sixty thousand dollars pretty easy. Okay, but here's here's the thing that everybody doesn't want to think about. Every mile that that truck runs has a cost. Let's say it's a dollar, okay? And you've got a cost of a dollar a mile, and you want to make 60. And for the sake of round numbers, uh, you're going to run 100,000 miles. You're going to make 60 cents a mile profit to you as, as the driver. Well, you've got to add in, okay, well, every one of those miles costs a dollar, so that's 100,000, and you're 60, so that's 160. Well, there's not... Uh, success does need to be defined by owner operator a worked a full year and made $60,000 and owner operator B worked a full year and made a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So one guy chose to work more than the other one and made more money, but that doesn't necessarily need, need to be the definition of success. But if the $60,000 guy didn't work enough to save the same amount of maintenance that the other guy did, there's your issue. It's all of the ancillary stuff that's around your profit or your, your net of having your maintenance savings and, and all of your taxes and all that kind of stuff. So we tell people that if you come to Landstar and do the way we do it, you should make no less than $150,000 a year. <clears throat> well, maybe somebody only wants to make 70. Well, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But if you don't know how to make the 150, then you have a problem because you've got to be able to survive when the market drops or when your truck breaks down or blows up or whatever it is. You can't just say, Oh, well, Hey, I got $60,000 and a broke down truck and now I can't make any money. What's what, what's the, the point in that go drive a company truck. So somebody can get you another truck when yours breaks. There's not a single guy out here, not a single owner operator, lease operator, whatever you want to call them that cannot navigate through this, market adjustment but it's going to take some self um what i'm trying to say analysis mm -hmm. you know you're going to have to look at things from a business standpoint the math's going to matter you've got to understand that fuel is your number one cost if you don't have measures in place to control that to where it's at least under the fuel surcharge or lower look how much money Steve Wheeler makes off of fuel surcharge. You don't have to just get your, your fuel cost down to 77 cents a mile. Get it down to 57 cents a mile. We got one truck that's at 60 some cents, low, low 60s, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can, it, 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 you know, it, it's, it's income. If you don't spend it, it's income. So if you're getting this fuel surcharge and you can operate your truck for less than whatever the fuel surcharge is, you're making money. Look, way back in 2009 when I first started this, I was getting 9.2 miles per gallon. OK, fuel back then was almost the same as it is now, not quite as much as in the high fours, fives. It cost me twelve hundred bucks to fuel up three hundred gallons. OK. And I my fuel was free at nine point two miles per gallon. My fuel cost me nothing. Mm -hmm. So, it you know, it, now did did I accidentally get nine point two? No, I worked my ass off to get nine point two, especially in a Mercedes motor. OK. Mm -hmm. 
but it's uh, it, I understood that that was important. I understood that, that was what was going to let me be in business, stay in business. Uh, I started this owner operator gig in 08, 09, this first this first bloodbath. I was there. Twenty five percent of MC numbers went away the first year I started in business. So it's um, everybody can can survive this without going home and put parking the truck out front and sucking your thumb. All you got to do is get a grip on what your costs are. If your cost of operating is higher than the rates, you're not going to make it. But you can fix that. OK, you might have to undo some decisions you made. All right. If you've got the wrong truck, now is the absolute best time to unload it. It's never going to be worth more than it is today. Sell it, okay? Sell it to somebody else that doesn't know what the hell they're doing, you know? And then get a truck that, well, first of all, don't even get a truck right now. Go to work for somebody. Make some money, save some money, come back in a year when truck prices have adjusted and buy the right truck and don't buy a a $200,000 truck. You know, buy a truck you can go pay cash for. Then you don't have the pressure of the next market adjustment. Get your cost of doing business down as low as you can. During the pandemic, we never sent anybody home. We never shut a truck down. We never were not profitable. We made money every week. Now, we weren't making as much as we did, you know, say last year, but we still made a profit. We still made a profit. We actually grew the fleet during the pandemic. So, so Hector, <clears throat> when I was talking about 150000 at net, 150 net, not 150 after, gross. After expenses. Our our the, the way our is after expenses. While our goal is set up now, the truck should earn about three fifty. Um, in this in in the market up to now, I mean we're pretty close, but we're struggling to hit our number. But for say twenty twenty one, three fifty to the truck, and you should make one hundred and fifty. Yeah, you should have one hundred fifty to two hundred left over after all of that, based on how we're doing things right now. And now in a normal market, now wait a minute, general freight, dry van, general freight. Right. Nothing Not specialized. specialized. Um, you know, right. back when, let me see. So 65, we, back in the pandemic, it was 6,500 times 50, which would be three times point sub one. It'd be 230,000, probably two, 225 to the truck. Um, and, you know, you could easily make a hundred or more from that. But in this market, you know, if, if, if I didn't have the responsibilities that I do at Blue Ribbon and I could go out, put me in a truck and turn me loose, knowing what I know now, I have no qualms that I could clear 200000 net before taxes as an owner-operator if I didn't have 14 trucks to run. But I've been on the road a couple of times since I've been doing this, and I don't want to do that anymore. Especially a midnight run to Pennsylvania. That about killed me. Still bitching about that. A week later. <clears throat> uh, Bill Taylor, there is no free ride for being in business. Sacrifice is part of the process. Giving the best surface increases your value to the customers you're working with. You don't go to Ruth Chris, Ruth Chris expecting a McDonald's hamburger and vice versa. That's it. Sacrifice. You know, I've said this before. I feel like in any other business, if a human being would go, okay, I'm going to start this business, which means I'm going to have to work incredibly hard, like harder than I've ever worked before. But for some reason in trucking, hey, I'm going to go get in business and I'm going to work less. Less, yeah, yeah. I'm going to work less. Mm -hmm. No, you're not going to work less. If you still want to have a business past year or two, you're not going home every time you want to go home. I mean, the stuff that I have missed um, in in my, my kids are right now between 7 and 16, and I've missed a lot, you know, and that I'm going on vacation next week to spend a week in the mountains with my daughter playing bluegrass music. And I'm going to enjoy every second of it. And I hear there's no cell service and I'm kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> you better take a satellite phone with you, brother. <laughs> they say we have Wi-Fi in the hotel, that part of West Virginia. I'm, I'm trying to calculate what kind of Wi-Fi that is, but I don't know. Maybe it'll be good. two cans and a string. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's um, shoot. I had a I had something important to say, and now I forgot what it was. Uh, 
<clears throat> it, it's well, no, I know it was. I know it was. I know it was. This is why this lease purchase thing is so is so popular, because it allows you to stick your toe in the water, without you know you you can get back out of it if it doesn't go right. You know, it's presented even at these big fleets as, oh, you want to do the company driver side or the owner operator side or lease operator side? Like it's a choice that you, which one, which, like you want to drive van or plat or, or platform, mm -hmm. you know, it, they, they don't talk about the commitment to make this side over here work. Here's the commitment that it takes, you know? Oh, and by the way, you're going to make less over here than you did as a company driver. They don't take say any of that stuff. Okay. It's just, let's let you try this. And see if it works out for you. And if it doesn't work out, you can always go back to being a company driver. You know, um, it doesn't walk work away, like least. that. Walk away. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I, we, we, cause we've interviewed some guys, you know, and, and they're, they'll tell us, well, I'm in a lease and, and we'll be like, well, are you contractually? No, it's a walk away. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we, by the, by the time they get done, they've lost all their escrow. They've lost, you know, and they got to pay. And yeah, right, right. Well, listen, I've mm -hmm. I've done. I did a lease at Prime in '99. <laughs> you talk about bad. Oh my God, it was awful. Okay, so I did a lease there, and I did the lease at Anderson. Okay, so I did three years at Anderson, and I did like six months at Prime, and I had this same experience twice. At Prime, there was some discrepancy on the settlement, right? And so I had this three ring binder where I had taken notes for all the loads and I'll walk into the payroll department and I said, Hey, I've got this problem. And I open up this binder and she looked at me like I had three heads and she's like, well, what's that? And I'm like, those are my records. She's like, I've never seen that before. You know, like, like why would you keep records? Cause I really wanted to understand how it worked. And then I figured out how it worked and left. But even when I was at Anderson, I would go in and I, and I had a spreadsheet and I tracked all my loads and I was tracking my fuel mileage, and my cost per mile. And I would go in and talk to the, the lease business people and they would just look at me kind of weird. Like, well, why are you doing that? And I'm like, cause I should know my numbers, right? Like I should know how this works and how the escrow works and how this money gets from here. Like, I don't know. I guess most people just don't care, but, and I'm a nerd. So I had to, I had to know, but you know, it's just <clears throat> my very first mentoring client was a prime lease operator. And I, I told you I've been in business in 77. I, I've, I work, I've been around financial statements. Okay. That was the most convoluted settlement I've ever seen in my life. Well, even one of our guys that we, that we coach right now, you know, he sent me all of his prime stuff from, the last year he was there it's yeah. the most convoluted thing i've ever seen it yeah. is At, uh, now fortunately i did figure out that because i had this stack trying to go through his stuff and at least they did have an operating statement at the end of all that convoluted nonsense that actually did kind of make sense and i was able to use that to kind of figure out but there's so many of these little oh well you know we'll get you for a penny or two here get you for five cents there and six cents here and all well, they got this charge and that charge and you know now this these documents right here say that he made money how did he make money he didn't go home for like 400 days like there's the numbers now he's a land and now he's a bco at landstar and i'm making him so much money right now he just he just man, you're just making me so much money. And I'm like, well, because you'll do it. I will, I will. It's one thing. Everybody's got to understand this. Everybody loves the idea. Oh, I can go to Landstar and pick my own loads. Yes, you can. Picking them is one thing. Running them is another. You got to be able to trip plan them. You got to be able to put them together. You got to be able to forecast out what you can do and when you can do it. Because if you don't, that third or fourth load is going to fall apart. And then you're going to be screaming because something happened. You got delayed, whatever, and the or a load cancels. And then you just fall apart because you can't, you can't put it back together. <clears throat> I agree with you, Ken. Usually if somebody makes something so complicated, you can't understand it. There's a reason for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like talking to mechanics that don't know what they're talking about. 
Oh. If they make it stupid enough, you know, and you can't understand it, you might believe them. <clears throat> we had an incredible thing happen this week. Uh, what was it, Chris? I'll think about it. We had an incredibly, incredibly stupid service experience this week. Maybe I'm thinking about the spare tire, the trailer tire last week. <clears throat> we have so many of them that, you know, it just, they all run, they all uh, uh, run together. Um, but yeah, there, there's something, oh, uh, you know, we, we get off on that tangent telling maintenance stories. And so, so we, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't, um, verify this, but we ran across a TikTok video last night, our YouTube video last night. This About guy, the oil. yeah, yeah, it was TikTok. This guy was claiming that the reason there's a shortage on diesel oil is because there's only two manufacturers of the additive package, and he named off one of them Chevron, one was I didn't even yeah, know. something else, yeah. Now we can't we we've we've researched we can't we can't find any factual you know evidence in this, but anyway, his premise was that the reason you can't find oil is because there's not any additive. They're package. not making it. To, they're not, not making it. So all that's out there is it's out there, you know. So I thought to myself, and he, and he made a comment at the end. Chris, said, Chris, you Chris, can't, Chris texted me this. It's like midnight last night. If you he can't said, make, if you can't go a year without getting your oil change, you're screwed. And I'm thinking, okay. So um, we're fine. I think we'll, I think with a, the, I need to call Pittsburgh Power. We need to about quadruple the price on OPS right now <laughs> because, uh, you know, we don't we don't change oil anyway, so um, I'm not screwed. We're good, okay. Uh, and by the way, I had the foresight of ordering um, a, a gallon, of, you know, a barrel of of it. Of what? How long has that been, Chris? Two months ago? Mm, maybe a little longer. But yeah, we ordered a 55 gallon drum of of our oil and got about half of it left. So I'm gonna try to order another one tomorrow and see what happens. Yeah. Now I expect them to say it'll be a week or two. You know. Right. Um. I was trying to, or oh, a fifth wheel. You know, uh, it, it, I, it I was, would be it'd be really good if that was true. It, it would be really, really good if that was true. I was trying to order a fifth wheel for a truck, and you know, with a fifth wheel, if it's a Fontaine and, and some of the Yoast, they they um uh you, they sell a rebuild kit, but you know, if your top plate's jacked up and um. And so, you know, I had a couple of choices and I was talking to Rick down in Jacksonville and he was like, well, if you want a new one, it's going to be 26 weeks and $3,000. I'm like, Jesus, you know, but it is what it is. Um, uh, I was watching, uh, uh, so Gentry and Sons is a YouTube channel I've been watching and he had a pretty good video the other day pointing out that, you know, if this deaf stuff about the deaf shortage is true and I'm not. I'm not convinced. I've se everybody has seen the um, um, pilot C uh, CEO talking about death and Union Pacific's cutting their capacity and they're not going to be able to haul enough death or whatever it is. But but Gentry was making the point: Hey, we're driving old trucks. I mean, we can literally go get parts for our trucks out of a junkyard, and we can pull trucks out of the junkyard and make them run and we can go haul freight. So if, if all these people that depend on death, um, are, are then that big of a trouble, then that's okay. We'll haul the freight. So again, he had the attitude of looking at it as an opportunity. So where's the opportunity at $5 a gallon fuel? It's in fuel mileage. You know, we, we went through all this with, with Kevin and the guys back in the late two thousands when people were changing gears and, direct drive transmissions and flow belows and, um, you know, um, and, and all that. Um, and so, well, <clears throat> let me go back to this fifth wheel story. So, cause Rocky's the one that discovered it. He says that truck has a hollow note now, actually not as a simplex as we found out. So we can't fix it. Um, but may have been changed from the vent when you're dealing with old trucks. Sometimes you can end up in a situation where you go to the dealer and say, Hey, here's the VIN number. And then you find out that somebody took a junkyard part off another truck, doesn't match your VIN. Now you can't find parts. And so 
uh, that was the situation that we ran onto in that truck. Um, I ordered parts for it. Turns out the fifth wheel has been replaced and doesn't match the, the VIN now. And so now we're, you know, scrambling around. We're just going to put a used one on it. Um, oh, and, and so to the deaf and leaves, I was getting ready to say this. Um, if this deaf thing really happens, they'll just turn the deaf system off. You know, they've already talked about doing an exemption for the sensors. So I, I, I just, um, <clears throat> I'm just skeptical, you know, of, of these stories when they come out, um, especially when they come from corporate CEOs. I just, I just don't trust me for everything thrilled, you know, especially after the last two years. I'm just going to kind of wait and see, you know. Um, Can't you just piss in some water and pour it in there? I mean, it's, isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it cow urine? Is that what it is? Uh, I think it's pig urine. Uh, which I was listening to the no agenda show and, and John C. Dvorak pointed out that maybe part of this problem is that some of those same chemicals are used in fertilizer. And with all the fertilizer problems we're having, we could be just diluting the supply because of it's needed for fertilizer. It's needed for death, you know, so. Well, uh, and we're going to plant-based meat, so we don't need pigs anymore. <laughs> and they, and they fart, I guess, you know, and, and yeah. so, uh, I don't know. We're, this is not the first time that society has had to deal with the consequences from stupid decisions of people in power. I, you know, that we, we've been through this before. And if we keep going the way we're going, we're going to go through it again. Um, the, the question comes down to, like we've said over and over and over again, what are you, like, Carl, what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about it? Because the government's not going to help you. President's not coming to help you. Um, when President, what's his name from Florida? Uh, what's that guy's name? Um, DeSantis. DeSantis. When President DeSantis gets elected, he ain't going to fix you. Trump ain't coming back. He ain't going to fix you. Biden's not going to fix you. What are you going to do about your operation to make yourself profitable enough? That, that's it. Profitable enough to get through this and be in there on the other side. Because, yes, people will uh, go out of business because they're going to refuse to do the hard work that you can decide to do. And you'll still be in business. We will still be in business when this is over. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not concerned at all. Um, I, I hate. I hate having to make as many phone calls as I do now compared to what it was like 90 days ago. Um, my, my life is a little bit harder and the drivers are going to have to hustle a little bit more because sometimes we're going to have to deadhead farther to get a better load. Um, but it is what it is. What are you going to do about your situation uh, that nobody else is going to do for you? That, that's, that's the bottom line. And no, Randy, Putin's not going to fix it either. <laughs> Business is hard, you know, and if you throw in the towel and quit, that's not anybody's fault but your own, you know. Now, there's no shame in maybe looking at your situation and going, well, I've got a $1,000 a week truck payment and I've done the numbers and maybe I can't make it. Well, may maybe that's true. And maybe you do need to get out of that truck, like Larry says, while you can get, get it sold while it's worth some money. And maybe you do need to take oh, it. Worth, it's worth double what it's worth. Right. Okay. So. <clears throat> you know, I'll be able to at least do that. But then educate yourself till you don't, so you don't get right back in that situation. <clears throat> <laughs> there ain't a snowball's chance in hell that happened to Lee Byer, okay? <clears throat> it may it makes Man. my stomach turn when Chris starts saying those those words he said a while ago, those names. <laughs> the orange guy, the Florida guy. The dimension listen, guy. I, listen, I had a I had a good one of my good friends in, in high school end up being governor of Kentucky. And listen, he was a solid guy, okay? Within two years, they destroyed him. They literally destroyed him mm -hmm. because he wasn't part of this political thing. He just agreed. You know, he was a local, you know, city council kind of guy and a state representative. And 
<clears throat> and he got up and he got to the Capitol and that, that, that political machine just, just chewed him up, you know? No, yeah. thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm good. What I'm doing right Listen, now. politics is for people that don't know how to do anything else. Absolutely. You know, they don't have, they don't, they, they literally don't have the, the sense or, um, or the skill, you know, to, to actually come out here into the market and, and do the things that, that provide for your neighbor. You know, they're, they're, they're too dumb. The only skill they have is the art of bullshit and lying. That's the only thing that they're good at, you know, and they think that you can't see through it. That's the thing that makes it funny. I just, I just laugh at it. It just makes, I look at it and I go, really? It's like, it's, it's like high school on steroids, mm -hmm. you know? It's like you, you look at me and go, seriously, you, you're 50 and you're a grown ass man. Okay. You really believe that shit that's coming out of your mouth? You know, ain't nobody in America believes that except that bunch up there inside that little bypass up there. What's it called? I call it malfunction junction, the district mm -hmm. of confusion. Look, I, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a lot easier to blame somebody else for your problems, but it doesn't fix them. Beltway. Thank you, Shane. That's what it was. Yeah. The Beltway. So what's uh, the Archer trucking? I have no idea what that business model is. So. Never heard of it. Um, I mean, the, the, what's, what's called, um, in Kentucky, Mercer, Mercer's close to Landstar. And of course, Landstar could, um, people, well, somebody could create another Landstar. I mean, it's not what well, JB Hunt's tried. That. Schneider's tried. Yeah. Here, here's the problem, though. Here's the problem. It's just like government. Once they get the power, they don't want to release it. Okay. Here's the reason that Mount Mercer is not like Landstar, because you can't come here and book your own loads and stack your loads. You might eventually you can book your own loads, but you can only book a load once you're empty. You can't stack them up. And there's a seniority. If you take a load and somebody has been there longer than you wants it, they can take it away from you. So, no, there's not one. I don't know of another one because Landstar never had the power, and so they didn't. They, they, we don't have to get it back from them. Landstar is nothing more than a co-op of a bunch of independent agents and a bunch of independent truck uh, uh, owner-operators put together with this back-end structure that both people pay to have done so they don't have to have their own authority. It's a genius program. And, no, there, I don't know of anything else that's close to it because – Landstar lets me run my business the way I want to run it. Landstar will let you come up here and run your business the way you want to run it. And as long as we both stay compliant, okay? Yep. We can both do what we want. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know about our tour, but I highly doubt that that's that that's the case. If I if I took my fleet to our tour, I'm not. I'm pretty pretty sure that I can't do what I do there. Okay. So. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know nothing about them, but listen, y'all here, we talk bad about Landstar. And look, Landstar <laughs> in the last 30 days, they've interviewed, interviewed me for their magazine. They've interviewed me for their podcast. And by the way, it's the very first podcast that everybody's put on YouTube. All right. You know, and I'm not, I don't carry the water for Landstar. All right. As a matter of fact, I was surprised that they even asked me to do those two things because, you know, I, and I say, I, I say it all the time. I wouldn't be anywhere else. But Landstar is still just a company, and they, those guys put their pants on just like I do, and they do they do things that are really, really, really stupid in my opinion. But I'm not here to fix Landstar. That's not my goal in life is to fix Landstar. I just listen. Give me the playbook, show me where the boundaries are, throw the ball up, and let's go. And I can make money. All right. All I got to do is know what the rules are and what the what, how we're supposed to work and, get, and and then get out of my way. And that's exactly what they do. Here's the rule book. Here's the ball. Throw it up. Y'all play. We're out of here. As long as you don't break any uh, laws and do crazy shit, we're fine. We'll even referee between you and the agents, which most people call brokers. But um, so no, I I don't uh, I. I I don't, I don't look at other businesses because I don't care. You know, I'm not going to find anything that's better than this. 
Um, so it, uh, it, I don't know. You know, I doubt it. I mean, I, if, if it was that good, I think I would have heard about it, but so I'm looking at, me. I'm looking at the Archer express, um, website. So they've got a contractor percentage plus fuel, 82% of the line haul, hundred percent of the fuel. And then they have different per mile plans based on the, um, different regions you know so if you wanted to run the the east which is north carolina up to maine it's a dollar 70 base 87 for fuel a market adjustment of 15 cents 272 a mile um <clears throat> so here's the thing okay if you can go to our tour express or schneider or jb360 and you can make a profit Go do it. Like, it's not like Landstar is the only thing. Now, obviously, Landstar is what we do. And people find us because they're looking for Landstar. And so it doesn't really it doesn't really benefit us to go somewhere else because people come to us looking for how to do it at Landstar. Um, but how many trucking companies are there? 500,000? Isn't that, that the number? It's, 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 an, it's an astronomical number of trucking companies in America. I bet you, if you looked hard enough, you could probably find some little 15 or 20 truck fleet that's got some customers that's really well run that would give you 80% and you could make a profit. You know, it, it, it's, but it's all going to come down to what value do you provide the customer? No matter where you do it, how you do it. Can you provide the value to the customer that makes it worth them writing you that check and will you do the due diligence and build the habits to stay in business? That's it. Income minus expenses equals profit. And if you do the job well enough to get the, the, the income and you do the job well enough to uh, manage the expenses so that you have enough profit, it doesn't matter where you do it or how you do it. We're at Landstar. So that's our thing, you know, um, but with I, all the, I like being in business with a $640 billion business. I find that to be very, very reassuring. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, and I don't back up a minute about the decision to give them 35% of my, of my money, which I'm, I'm saying that tongue in cheek because yeah. I don't believe any of that. It's not my money and it's not 35%, but, uh, you know, that's what everybody says, you know? Uh, most people that badmouth Landstar really don't know anything about it or they came here and failed. And so they got a chip on their shoulder, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the easiest thing to do is when, when you fail is to find somebody else to blame except yourself, you know, which is the biggest attraction I had when I found this guy. The only person I've ever seen ever, ever to this day that failed miserably and publicly said it wasn't anybody's fault but mine. That's why I reached out and grabbed him. So, um, which, as our drivers can attest, makes me uniquely qualified to call you out on your bullshit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the well, excuse is just, you know, I've been there, done that, y'all. Well, <clears throat> I guess the moral of tonight's story is that you could take your truck home and park it and pout and try to try to punish the industry. Let us know how that works out for you. Yeah. Yeah. Send me an email. Or, email. or why don't you just self, um, analyze, you know, analyze and figure out how to make a profit. And if look, listen, business fail every day. They can't make a profit. Okay. There's there. You're not guaranteed success. That's another beautiful thing about Landstar, by the way. One of the, the biggest reason I like Landstar is equal opportunity, but not equal results guaranteed. Mm -hmm. I like it that I can get rewarded for everything I do at Landstar and the next guy doesn't because I'll outwork him every time. Okay. And I want, I don't want that ceiling, but getting back to what I'm saying, just, but listen, because you bought a truck and because you've been in business, even if you've been in business 39 years or whatever, you know, that that does there's no entitlement there if you're going to be in business you're going to stay in business because of what you do 
not the government guaranteeing you a rate. That would be the worst thing we could ever happen here. Okay. You, you know, it, the, 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 the land star system is the free market in its purest form. Everybody can participate, but everybody won't get a trophy. And that pisses a lot of them off because they're jealous of the guys who get the trophies. Okay. But yep. that's how I want it to be. That's how the, the, the free enterprise system is designed to work. And that's how it, um, that's why this country is so, is so wealthy is because it allows people to achieve what they can achieve without restriction. <clears throat> and, uh, this is just a microcosm of that. So, um, uh, well, if you're a BCO and you're struggling right now, <clears throat> we can help. We have a mentoring program for BCOs. Um, I can help you uh, generate the revenue. Um, I can teach you the trip planning and everything that goes into that. And then Larry can show you how to properly do your accounting. And we can show you where you're losing money because you probably are. It's either going out the tailpipe um, or you're missing opportunities to make money in the loads and, the, and that you're taking and the lanes that you're running or refusing to run. Um, so go to the website, blueribbonlogistics.com slash BCO mentoring and, um, <clears throat> and fill out the form and, and give us a call. And we can help you with that. You can we also... Can, we can constructively... Look at your operation, assuming that you'll be honest with us and tell you where if there if there's a problem, where it's going to be and what it's going to take to fix it. it. That's it. You know, that's what we're that's what I've done all my life since 1977. OK, so it's not uh, it, it's very easy for me to do it, but you've got to accept it. You've got to open up the books and say, here's what I've got. And we don't need excuses and all that stuff, because that's what got you where you are right now. And let's just look at it. Let's figure out what it is, what's it going to take to make you profitable and get through this. And then on the other side, make you unbelievably profitable if you'll just do the things that we show you how to do. Followers to it. You can come to the Reset Your Mindset 2022 live event in Hurricane in July where you'll get two days of this. And we'll break it down. Uh, we'll have a good time. Uh, but we will, we'll talk about everything. We'll talk about maintenance. We'll talk about accounting and taxes and revenue, um, and, and how to make your business blood, blood, I was going to say blood bath proof. There you go. <clears throat> so go to the website, blue ribbon logistics.com. You've only got till Flash. Friday. You've only got five more days to get to $50 off on the early bird special on the, on the, um, no, three more days. It ends June oh, 15th, that, right? Oh, that's, that's right. Today's the 12th. Oh, yep. the 10th. Yeah. So, so Wednesday, Wednesday night, right? Yep. Sunday Wednesday midnight or Wednesday night at midnight. Yep. So get your, get your off. registrations in. We are not going to extend that. I can tell you that right now. So we're already half full and we got six weeks to or five weeks to go. So we're not going to, uh, we're not going to extend it. So jump in now. And we have some trucks available. Um, so if you're looking for an opportunity to come and experience the Landstar system and how we do things and figure out if being an owner operator is something that you really want to do, you can come do that in one of our trucks. We've got a couple available. So if you go to drive the number four blue ribbon.com, fill out the form, we'll get in touch with you. We'll set up an interview. We'll talk about it. We'll smack you in the mouth a little bit. Um, so, come with a mouth guard and some steel toes on cause you know, we get a little rowdy in our interviews cause we have to make sure that you understand what you're getting into. And sometimes we have to hit you in the mouth a little bit. Well, and let me just point David's question. Do you guys need a driver right now? No, we don't need any drivers, but if you'd like to come here and learn how to become an owner operator, a successful Landstar, yes, we have an opening, but we don't hire drivers. We don't have jobs. We don't have benefits. It's an, it's a paid, um, um, What's the word, Chris? Help me. Apprenticeship. Appre yeah. Like, it's a yeah. paid apprenticeship. It pays very well, by the way. But uh, it's not a job, you know, and we're not going to make it like a job. It's going to it's a it's a master's degree in trucking business. 
uh, and that's what you're going to get by coming here. So, but yes, we do have a, an opening or two available. Um, we just hired a guy. We're interviewing some more this week. So um, we'd love to, if you're interested in learning what we talk about here, if you learn, if you're interested in being successful in business, um, particularly at Landstar, that's where our expertise is. Uh, we still would recommend that once you leave here, that's what you do is go to Landstar uh, for the reasons that we talk about. Uh, but we uh, we will um, we will look forward to uh, to having you here. And uh, already reserved, I'll be there. Good deal. So we've got well, we got we we're half full. We're we we're half full. So um, and we ended Randy, up. Randy wants to know if there are any other discounts available. We charge him double, right? Oh no, he him bring his truck and give me the title you know, he get it, okay? or that cargo he hauls that he claims is as good as Kentucky's bring one oh, of those. Yeah. Bring yeah. one of those with you and I'll let you in for free. Okay. So yeah, now, I'm not talking about the little one. I'm talking about the barrels. Okay. Randy. So <laughs> I've seen your freight. All right. So, um, yeah. So get you guys, get your stuff in and, uh, we look forward to meeting all of you. And uh, spending a weekend together, we're going to have a great time. It, it's you guys. The problem with this is nobody goes to bed. That's the problem. Everybody stays up all night talking and showing their trucks and sharing. And it's just a great. I'm going to have to keep you awake, though, on day two, because you're not going to get any sleep on Saturday night. So, yeah. Um, but uh, listen, we look forward to meeting you guys. And uh, and, uh, you know, it's it, uh, enough, the main thing. Look, the fun's great. But the main thing is you're going to learn how to make money. We're going to, you're going to learn how to cut your cost and get through this bloodbath. You know, you're going to learn, understand what it's going to take to be in business, stay in business. And then when you get through this, to be ex excellent at business to where you, where you, you know, this will never, ever be an issue for you again, you know. And all it, is, all it just takes a few, everything we talk about, listen, we don't, you don't have to come here and do sit-ups and push-ups. Run a marathon. You, all you got to do is listen and make better decisions. That's all you got to do. And that's what we're going to teach you. Yep, that's it. Well, I think we can yeah. shut her down for tonight. Well, um, one more thing. Yeah. We got to we tell you about, about Pittsburgh Power. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's who's paying us to be here now. So we got to talk about them. Look, guys, Pittsburgh Power is the first of all, they got the, the probably the best shop in the country. They got four uh, electrical engineers on staff. So you don't go in there like you do the TA and oh, we don't work on that. We can't figure We don't have a light, a uh, test light. These guys can take an ECM to part, pay, put it back together. All right. So they're, they're, they're really, really good at what they do. If you need to get a tune on your motor, you need to get some problems resolved, problems diagnosed, you know, set it up, set up a time to go see them. Uh, performance parts, aftermarket parts, a lot of parts we use for our lunatic trucks, we, we get from them. And of course the OPF, if you, if you're not going to be able to buy oil, why don't you keep the oil in the truck clean so you don't have to change it? Remember I got a 1.8 million mile truck sitting over here that's had four oil changes in its life. And none of them were because the oil was dirty. We just wanted to try a different oil. So um, if you're throwing good oil down the, down the uh, tubes every, every month or two, you're throwing money away, okay? And you can't tell me that it hurts the motor because if I'm in another Mercedes engine that went 1.8 million miles, by the way, it still is going, by the way. It yep. still works, all right? So, um, and, uh, of course, the, if you've got a, an, an 04 or later engine with EGR and DEF, uh, you need to be run the catalyst, Okay. Uh, it will, it will, first of all, it will, it will solve your soot problem, solve your EGR problems, and you won't have to delete it. You won't have to be worried about being illegal, clean it up and run it with the catalyst. And you don't have to worry about it. So anyway, Mark, Mark's asking, uh, is there a YouTube video y'all train on the subject of fuel? Yes. Uh, two episodes ago, one 13, um, we had William Haynes, our top fuel mileage driver. Um, on the podcast, William will be doing a presentation at the live event. So, um, you need to come to the live event. Go uh, sign Marky, up. Marky, Mark, you need to find the funky bunch and that's us. Okay. <laughs> so you come live and you'll see the funky bunch and then we can go together. Marky, Mark and the funky bunch. Is that too old, Chris? Is that, that's, that's 80. Yeah. That's like 89. Yeah. Okay. 
I thought it was cute. Did you not think it was uh, cute? I listened. It was well done. Well done. Thank you. Uh, programming note, we're going to be on Saturday the next two weeks because I'll be in the mountains Sunday, and then we're doing an orientation that following weekend, so we'll be live from the hotel uh, on Saturday night. So we'll be on the next two Saturdays. Was there, a, was there some talk of us recording and having it come recorded on Sunday night, or has that been scuttled by the production staff? I don't remember that conversation happening, but it could happen. You know, we, William, William said something about the, the, uh, the algorithms, us not coming up at the time we're supposed to come up. Oh yeah. Who knows? <clears throat> we got a pretty good audience. I like them. So, all right. All right. So, well, that's it. We're going to shut her down. We will see you guys next Saturday, uh, at 9 PM and we'll talk to you then. Have a great week guys. Be safe. See you next week.